Good evening and welcome to our public worship service at St John's Presbyterian Church Annerley with one of our retired pastors, Pastor John Tucker, leading our final worship service for 2023. As always, we commend to your prayers those of our church family members uh, recovering from medical treatment or recent procedures, those of our aged church family and retirement complexes, and those with long-term illness. Our worship services next Sunday, the first Lord's Day of 2024, will be as usual. Our morning service led by our own pastor, Reverend Martin Duffield, evening worship by another of our retired pastors, Reverend John Roth. Just find the literature available, the Challenge newspaper is still copies available, and also the Read, Pray and Grow devotional booklets for the coming first quarter of the new year. We are now encouraged to engage in personal preparation just prior to our call to worship. Thank you. God, whose love is freedom, whose touch is healing, whose voice is calm. We meet not in our own strength, but in the knowledge that God's Spirit abides within us, in our worship tonight and in our daily lives when we depart from this place. The blessings we receive is shared in the, knowledge, in the hope that others might be drawn to the, to the God whom we serve. Our call to worship is from Isaiah chapter 60, the first six verses. Hear what we are told through Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant, and your heart shall swell with joy, because of the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you, the multitudes of camels shall cover your land, the dormitories of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. Let's stand and sing the hymn, My Mind, May the Mind of Christ Our Saviour.
come before the throne of grace now with our prayer of adoration. Let us all pray. Our most merciful Father in heaven, we rejoice that you reign sovereignly over the universe so that you do according to your will in the armies of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. You are the maker of our bodies, the father of our spirits, and you have a perfect right to dispose of us in the way which will most effectively promote your glory. And we know that whatever you do is right, wise, just and good. And whatever may be our eternal destiny, we rejoice in the assurance that your great name will be glorified in us. But as you have been pleased to reveal your mercy and your grace to our fallen, miserable world, and as the word of this salvation has been preached to us, inviting us to accept eternal life upon the gracious terms of the gospel, we do humbly receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Saviour and only Redeemer, believing sincerely in the whole testimony which you have given respecting his divine character, his real incarnation, his unspotted and holy life, his numerous and beneficial miracles, his expiatory and meritorious death, and his glory, resurrection and ascension. We believe in his supreme exaltation, in his intercession for his chosen people, in his affectionate care and aid given to his suffering members here below, and in his second coming to receive his humble followers to dwell with himself in heaven. We pray and acknowledge all these things in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our reading is Isaiah 43. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 14 to 21. Verse 14. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, For your sake I will send to Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives, the Chaldeans who rejoice in their ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honour me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. And to God be all the glory. Amen. The hymn, Father, although I cannot see.
Perhaps come before the throne of grace with our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Our loving, triune God, grant us your gracious guiding presence as we prepare to enter the new year, as we join Christians of every time who have awaited Jesus' return. Lead us into this new time confident that your promises will be fulfilled. Spirit of truth, call us to repentance and at the beginning of this new year. Forgive us for the past unfaithfulness, silence in the face of injustice and inaction amid suffering. Prince of peace, healer and reconciler, heal the divisions in your church and among the peoples of the world. As you prayed, that we should all be one, give us new visions to enable, us, enable that unity. God of all ages, release us from fear. Lead us forward, even as you have led your church forward from an empty cross and a tomb through 20 centuries. By be our companion as we walk unexplored, uh, as we walk unexplored paths in an unknown future. Open us to new possibilities. Renew our hope. Grant us faith to remove ahead. Be our companion until Jesus comes again. And we pray in his name. Amen. Our New Testament lesson is Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Verse 1. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent, sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. And again, to God be all the glory. Let's now give thanks for the gifts that have come in tonight and during the week. Let's pray. Lord of all life, you have called us together in the name of Christ Jesus. We thank you for your gifts which make us what we are from your daily provision. We, from your daily provision, 
we bring you your tithes and our offerings and ask that they be used to your glory and praise in our Saviour's name. Amen. Amen. To him all the way my Saviour leads me, what have I to ask beside? so much so that the people complained about the noise. So when the father came and the manager complained to him and told him what his daughter was doing, he went to the back of the girl, took her arms in his hands and played some of the most beautiful music that they had ever heard. That's what Christ did for me. He took my arms and led me 
and allowed me to do what I did for him. Let's come in our prayer of intercession. Our Father in heaven, who because of your everlasting love, you generously provide all things for us. As we begin a new year, we pray for this, our nation. Guide with your wisdom and power our governance so that everyone may live in peace and mutual trust. We commend to your mercy those nations whose people are suffering greatly because of wars throughout the world. Sharing with justice the resources of the earth Give the people of this land a spirit of unselfishness, compassion and fairness in public and private life. We pray that your church on earth will be strengthened as the light and truth of your gospel goes out and many people will be brought out of the, their superstitions and come to, the know, come to know and love you. Enable those who minister among us to commend your truth by their example and teaching. May we greatly receive and obey your word. We pray for those in need. We commend to your fatherly care, merciful God, all who are in sorrow, sickness, discouragement or any other troubles. Give them patience and a firm trust in your goodness. Help those who care for them and bring us all into the joy of your salvation. We give thanks for the life and work of all your servants whose lives have honoured your Christ. Encourage us by their example so that we may run with perseverance the race that lies before us and share with them the fullness of joy in your kingdom. Hear these our prayers, Father, through Jesus the Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. And now, Father, as you have declared that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth, may your Holy Spirit be our teacher today as we come to look at your word. May your Spirit also cause us always to hunger and thirst after the truth of your word that we may eat and be satisfied, that our faith may be nourished and strengthened as we journey along the narrow road that leads to life. And we pray this through Jesus our Lord. Amen. As you see in your sheets, I've entitled my sermon, A New Road for a New Year. Last Tuesday evening, while discussing the number of road, road fertilities on our Queensland roads, there was an article of an elderly man with maybe a two-year-old boy. The man was lamenting the fact that the one of those fatalities was his son, the father of the young boy who was born after the death of his father. The father made this statement that this little boy will never know the love of his father's arms around him. That statement caused me to stop and wonder if during this past year did someone who God placed under my ministry leave this earth without knowing the security that the loving arms of Jesus the Christ should have brought them. We who are true believers must remember that we are Christ's disciples all our thoughts, words and actions must reflect the living Lord Jesus the Christ and be an encouragement to follow him. There can be no doubt that as we see the shadows of darkness falling around us, the year 2023 is coming to a close. A new year always brings the sense of hope. The previous year with all its tragedies, problems, disappointments, failures, sadness is now behind us and a clean state, a clean slate lies ahead. With whistles and horns, 
and parties and probably more to eat and drink than we should have, we will usher in the new year. Yet beneath the gaiety and laughter, there is a gnawing feeling. It's all still the same. Nothing really has changed. If anything passing through the seasons of light and glitter and carols of the seasons of darkness only makes the emptiness worse and the depression deeper. Also, many of us may be feeling personal pains or anxieties in this new year. Some of us are wrestling with important decisions regarding a primary relationship or a task to be done. Some know firsthand the powerful effect of disabling disease or worry about health issues in the up and coming months. Some have had to deal recently with a major loss. Some of us are feeling very lonely in spite of the people all around us. Some of us fear growing older or fear what the future may hold. Some wonder if dreams will ever be realised or whether the new year will even be more frustrating and with feelings of futility than the last. When we feel this way, the temptation is to stay with the familiar and the comfortable, to crawl back into bed and pull up the covers or to sneak into the manger with Jesus where it's warm, safe and secure. The temptation is to stay where we are, in the dark green crevices of depression or defeat, of fear or foreboding, in the deep ruts of shame, sameness, boredom or lethargy. But Ephany, with its emphasis on a light shining in the darkness, reminds us that life continues, that revelation and growth and new beginnings loom on the horizon, that new roads appear up ahead, new roads that will take us if we choose to let them into new adventures, new challenges, new opportunities to be the person God wants us to be. Ephany reminds us that life continues even as one year ends and another begins, one season following another as they, they sing in Fiddler on the Roof. The Magi, also called the wise men, or the three kings who bring their gifts to the Christ child illustrate the movement. These magi were probably astrologers, astrologers from the east, perhaps from Persia or Babylon, present day Iran and Iraq. They believed that human destiny was written in the stars and though they were learned men of their day, we would consider many of their notions superstitious Yet, if I ask right now, which I won't, how many of you know your own astrological sign, I, over 90% of you would raise your hand. Nonetheless, the wise men agreed upon one thing, as many of us do also. They believed that human events were influenced by a power beyond this world. Tradition says that there were three of them. The Bible doesn't say how many. In the Middle Ages, they were given names, Casper, Melchor, and Belteshazzar. They are nameless in the Bible. The story in Matthew is about kings and wise men. But these are the people in addition to the magic. The, king are the, are the kings are Herod, a ruthless tyrant, who stoops at nothing to achieve his goals, and Jesus, a vulnerable and helpless baby, who was born a king, not a prince, but a king, a baby who grows up to be a ruler whose power is hidden in humility. The wise men are the chief priests and the scribes, well versed in the scriptures, who are called in by Herod to tell him where the so-called king of the Jews was born. The Magi from the East are inquisitive, adventurous, obedient to their calling, and seek no honour for themselves. They humble themselves before the Christ child and offer sacrificial gifts of great value. In short, they fit the image of servants more than royalty or those with superior wisdom and thus are extremely role models for us. 
but it is what they do at the end of the story that is of particular interest this, this evening. Matthew says they are warned in a dream not to return to Herod. In the Bible, dreams are the important conduit for God to communicate with people. Could be for us too, for as we know that God is still speaking. The Magi, after they had offered their gifts, realised the danger of returning to Herod and leave for that, their own country by another road. They don't hang around to ask in the beauty of the baby, to bask in the beauty of the baby. They don't stay, stay where it's comfortable and secure. They set out from there by another road, a new road, a different road than the one they had been travelling on. They move on in their journey of life, and so must we. For us, the manger is the only stopping place of our journey of faith. And while the tranquility of the manger may move us deeply, it should never transfix us. The rest of Christ's journey and our journey remains to be travelled. As we embark on this new year, embodied so well in the spirit of Ephemy and the reality of, this, of life moving on, a fair question for us to ask, how can we move on? The answer may be found in the refrain from the old church camp song, which many of us will remember, Rise and Shine. Isaiah tells the people of Israel to arise, shine, for your light has come. They must no longer live in darkness, nor should we. Rise and shine, get up, begin again. There is more to, be done, more to come. There are new roads to travel upon this new year. But there are also powerful for forces work against this directive. Apathy, lack of confidence, or physical or mental state, extreme caution, or timidity, all these tend to hold us back. Worse than any of these is the fear, disabling, crippling, immobilising fear. In the early part of the 19th century, one dark winter's night, a weary traveller came to the banks of the mighty Mississippi for the first time. There was no bridge in sight and ice covered the water as far as we could, one could see. Could he dare cross over? Would the ice here bear his weight? It was urgent he reached the other side. So finally, after much hesitation and with fear and trembling, he began cautiously creeping on his hands and knees across the surface of the ice. By distributing his weight this way, he hoped to prevent the ice from crackling beneath him. About halfway across, he heard a noise behind him, and he turned and looked to see a man driving a horse-drawn sleigh filled with coal, starting to cross the river. And here was the traveller on his hands and knees. The man and his horse and his sleigh full of coal dashed past him and out of sight across the same river of ice on which he was creeping. You and I are sometimes like the trouble, can't, aren't we? Fear, by whatever name we call it, can prevent us from doing so much. Cautiously, timidly, trembling, we venture forth upon God's promises as though the lightness of our step might make the promises more secure. Yet at the same time, we doubt that, we are, that they are true. God has promised to be with us. We should believe this promise. God has promised to uphold us no matter what we believe. God has promised to grant us victory over all our spiritual enemies. Believe this promise. God has promised to grant us full and free forgiveness of, all, of our sins through, the, through and because of Jesus Christ, our newborn Saviour. Believe this promise. Don't creep upon these promises as though they were too fragile to hold you up. Stand upon them, confident that God is as good as God's word and that our living, loving Lord will deliver them as promised. Maybe you've heard the expression, 
even if you're on the right track, you still can get run over if you just sit there, which is true. So in this new year, let us get up and get going. Let us rise and shine, knowing that it is God's light that empowers the light within us. This sounds like a great New Year resolution, doesn't it? But it won't be complete until we finish the old camp songs refrain and give God the glory. We do this by living thankful lives, thanking God for the blessings we have received and by sharing the good news with others. We do this individually as we gather together as the church. The mission of the church as Paul implies in Ephesians, is to reflect the light of Christ, to point Christ's work in the world, to declare Christ's redemption, to reveal the mystery, to make known God's wisdom, but perhaps, but perhaps, perhaps most important, to mirror and imitate Christ's love and deeds of mercy. And this is our individual mission as well, for we have been born into and have embraced the light of Christ ourselves. Rose Crawford was a blind for the first 50 years of her life until one day she found out that there was an operation that could restore her sight. And so she had the operation. You can imagine her awe and joy at seeing light and colours, images of people and the beauties of nature, none of which she had ever seen before. Sadly, Rose could have had that surgery 20 years earlier. She was unnecessarily blind for 20 years because she didn't know about the operation and assured, assumed she was doomed to live in darkness. Nobody told her about the sight restoring surgery. Nobody told her she no longer had to continue to live in darkness. Millions of people today live in spiritual darkness because nobody has told them that they no longer have to live there anymore. Part of the giving of God's glory is sharing the light of Christ's glory with others. Each of us has a new road ahead of us in the new year. It's another road, a different road than we have ever travelled before. And as we step off down the road not knowing what we may find, not knowing exactly where we are going, we can be comforted in the knowledge that for, for sure the light goes with us, leading us, guiding us, showing us the way. God will be with us on our journeys down the new road ahead. Even now God is calling to each of us, whoever we are, whatever our circumstances, calling us to get up off our hands and knees, to stop creeping and rise and shine and continue the journey giving God our praise and showing the good news which others along the, with others along the way. Some of us may be thinking, well that's fine for the young folks, but I'm too old for the, to be thinking about starting off on any new roads. Tony Robinson in his recent still speaking devotional response with this reassurance. There is grace here, not just for the young, but for the old or older as well. It's not hard, is it, to see the possibility of a new life and a new beginning when we are young or in the lives of the young. It may be more difficult to imagine such grace and newness when we are well beyond the, that time of life when the future is no longer so open or full of promise as it once was. More reason to than to receive the gift of this part of the story, the promise of grace and new life, not only for the young, but for the long, but, but no longer young as well. Grace happens, surprises, and new life can come no matter what our age. Look today for the surprise of God's grace in your life, no matter what age you are. A New Year's Eve poem I came across concludes with these words. With courage we face the future. With warm memory we sing the old year out. With hope in our hearts and voices we face the sunrise 
of God's new dawn. So let's rise and shine and give God the glory. May the hope dwell in our hearts and voices as may <coughs> and voices and may that sunrise, the light of Christ, shine through, shine brightly on each of us as we journey on the new road which we'll be travelling upon this new year. Let's pray. To you, O oh God, we cannot be in better hands than in yours as we embark on this new year. Be ever near us, not as wayfaring people that turns aside to tarry for only a night. May, we, may your continued presence and favour travel with us along this new road of the year 2024. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For him I'm not skilled to understand. And if you don't mind, I might sit here. Father, we have ended this year by being fed on your word. As we begin a new year, may we continue to know your presence and power in the very different lives that we lead, to your praise and glory. Go in peace and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all.